the Baltimore Ravens versus the Indianapolis Colts. Look, man, the Ravens, they play defense. That running game is amazing. Um, you know, the passing game is a little bit of a question. You could see it in the stat line, and it's not just stats. You know, I'm not a stat sheet you know, exclusive stat sheet guy. I mean, you can see it on the field too, man. It's just they need some kind of downfield element. Curious to get your uh, thoughts on um, on Des Bryant when we get there. I know he kind of tweeted and we laughed about it. But <laughs> I t- I, I, before I pass it over to you, I'll tell you why it might work. But let's get with the fantasy football projections. Lamar Jackson, I'm sorry, he's a start every week. I don't have a great grade on him because I really respect the Indianapolis Colts defense. And by the way, I respect the Baltimore Ravens defense. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. But just because of the rushing ability, you start Lamar Jackson. Um, I don't have start grades on either of these running backs, but let me be honest with you. I love the way that they perform. Uh, Mark Ingram, I think he's going to be out again. Gus Edwards is a pickup. J.K. Dobbins is a pickup, teasing our waiver wire segment um, later on this week. I think he can play both of them. But I'm staying away from the pass catchers in this game, and that includes for me this week, Mark Andrews. I recognize if you have him, you probably start him, but he this matchup worries me against the Indianapolis Colts. For the Colts, Phillip Rivers, look at his last couple of games that he's settled into this offense with his receivers, get a little bit more chemistry, working in Naheem Hines. I don't like him versus Baltimore. But he might be somebody you pay attention to if you're really starved at quarterback for the rest of the year. Um, I think you could start him in super flex, but nothing else. Um, Jonathan Taylor, that was weird yesterday. I'll let you talk about that, David. I have him as a start just based on volume, but this isn't a great matchup for running backs, You know, whether it's Taylor or anybody else. Uh, wide receivers and, and tight ends, I stay away from. Like I said, I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. Take it away. Oh, 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 before, the Des Bryant thing. Look, you know, <laughs> if he signed 31 other teams, man, I wouldn't like this signing. Maybe 30 other teams, I wouldn't like this signing. Baltimore, because there's, to me, struggling going over the top, and they have Duvernay, they have speed and Marquise Brown and all that stuff. You know, maybe they need another wide receiver just to run those physical slant routes. Des Bryant, we haven't seen him. I know you you really don't like these 30-year-old-plus receivers with injury issues, and I don't disagree with you, especially with Des Bryant, but they need something. And... I wouldn't have begrudged Baltimore to sign um, Antonio Brown. Obviously, he went to Tampa Bay. Des Bryant, they bring in another guy with some off-the-field kind of quirks. Maybe not as much as Antonio Brown, but they need to do something. So, I mean, what else could they do? But why don't you take it away, David? Give me your thoughts on fantasy and then Des Bryant as well. I'm going to start with Des Bryant yeah. just because that's that's an intriguing topic for me. And I do think he is a a solid addition to this team. And I do think he's going to help us play better football. But I I don't think it's going to equate to fantasy success. I would agree. They can hardly support Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews right now. Like, there's almost no way they're going to support a third wide receiver on a weekly basis. But we do need another guy who can make plays in the red zone in the passing game. You talk about... Willie Sneed is the only other guy who's making plays beyond Andrews in Hollywood right now. So there's there's opportunity. And what it comes down to is you look at Mark Andrews and Hollywood. Both of these guys have dealt with injuries in the past. Neither one of them is exactly has a pristine injury track record. So if one of them goes down, Jess Bryant immediately could step in as the number one or number two receiving option on this team. So there's upside i think in a dynasty format i'm not completely writing him off because some dynasty leagues he's he's not even being added and people just think he's he's done wash up right i think there's it's worth stashing him in redraft i don't really have any interest at all whatsoever until there is one of those injuries um but again it's des bryant he's not I don't even know if he's 30 years old yet or just turned 30. So he's, He is. He crossed the threshold. I don't, I don't know exactly. He's younger than Julio Jones. He's younger than a, a number. He's younger than hey. T.Y. Hilton. So, I mean, okay. people, are still, people are still rostering T.Y. Hilton. So <laughs> Maybe not, not anymore, but yeah. Off. I'm not going to write him off for dead just yet. Let's see what he does at least. Yep. And speaking of, speaking of seeing what they do, let's talk about J.K. Dobbins. He finally got <laughs> a workload. Finally, right? Pounding this table. All season long for J.K. Dobbins to get some touches. Finally, with Mark Ingram out of line. Please do not try and put the genie back in the bottle. I know. Jim Harbaugh, it's clear you need to get this guy the ball. Lamar Jackson, don't be afraid to give him the ball on a read option. You don't need to carry it yourself every single damn time. There was at least three or four. But, and maybe, maybe this is just a fan watching and someone who hmm. isn't a complete expert. There was multiple plays 
where Jackson faked it to Dobbins, and Dobbins wasn't touched till five yards up the field. I'm like, yes! And then I see, oh, no, Jackson <laughs> still got the ball three yards in the backfield. Like, you don't have to do everything, Lamar. J.K. Dobbins is a good running back. Yeah. Just give it to him sometimes, all right? So he, he's got to be a must-star as long as Mark Ingram's out. He did against the Steelers. I don't care that the Colts are a great rushing defense. He's a must-star. And even Gus Edwards when Mark Ingram's out. How do you call him anything but a must-start? Yeah. I mean, he's not catching the ball, but he's he's going to go for almost 100 yards and probably a touchdown yeah. every time Ingram's out. Yeah, and you know, a couple things here. As a Ravens fan, just one word answer here. Would it bother you if I told you Mark Ingram will never play for the Ravens again? And I'm not saying that, but I'm saying nope. would it bother you? Nope. No. It uh, wouldn't have bothered me if you told me that at the beginning of the season. <laughs> yeah. I, I, want, I never believed in Mark and, uh, Ingr Ingram Excuse me, this year. I mean, come on, guys. You have two clearly talented running backs behind him. Move on. You know, uh, Gus Edwards was one of these running backs, and I know people, people not so much anymore, but in seasons past, they kept talking about Justice Hill. And I don't think Hill's bad or anything, but I'm thinking, like, Gus Edwards, to me, is almost like a Chris Carson where people want to write him off a little bit. Um but he just produces. Look at his look at his career statistics. He produces when he's in the lineup. So I was intrigued by him as a dynasty candidate for next season. But I think the cat's out of the bag now. I think you got to add him if you're in a dynasty format. If he's available, and if he is available, like make him your like one of your top clips. Because whether it's for the Ravens, I think he's an unrestricted free agent this year. Whether it's for the Ravens or somebody else next year, he will be a starter, I believe, or at least getting you know a first and second down back role. J.K. Dobbins, I mean. You know, I, I said this in, in the book, the Fantasy Football Almanac book. Um, he was my favorite rookie running back this year. Yes, more so than um, than Jonathan Taylor. He was my and more than De DeAndre Swift. He was my favorite rookie running back this year in terms of talent. And I think what I said is, you know, it might take him about eight games to overtake Mark Ingram. I think he has kind of overtaken Ingram. But I'm worried about Gus Edwards now, man, because all the dude does is produce. However, here's the deal: is when this backfield is down to two backs. You know, you could start both of the backs. Um, when Ingram gets back there, I'll be curious to see what happens. But, you know, is this the start of the J.K. Dobbins thing, like we saw a couple weeks ago with DeAndre Swift, although we'll talk about that in a bit? Um, maybe. Maybe it is. So, you know, we've been pounding the table. It's not surprising that it's taken weeks. But come on, guys. Just get him the ball. I mean, he's dynamic. Outside of Lamar Jackson, who is the most dynamic player, I mean, it's J.K. Dobbins. And I like Gus Edwards, too. But let me hit you with the line here, David. We got Baltimore, according to Bavada, minus three versus Indianapolis. Who do you like? This is going to be a smash spot. I'm probably going out and putting some money on this game. Ball this is a get-right game for Baltimore. Phillip Rivers is not going to be able to handle the heat. This is going to be, I believe, a 14 to 20 point win. For Whoa. Baltimore. I don't know this if I'm going to go that it's, far. It's going to be a smash I, a smash. I think, you know, Baltimore, they didn't play poorly. You know, I, I talk about good losses and bad losses. I think that was a good loss. Um, I, I'm not worried about it. You know, it's you're playing a, a two high-caliber teams playing last week. Indianapolis, I, I agree with you. I don't think they have the offense to, to keep up. I mean, their defense, I really respect them. I don't think it's going to be that big of a, of a victory, but I'm comfortably on the Baltimore side. I think it'll be – I think it's more like a touchdown, but I, I like Baltimore to come back from the loss. Um and you're right. I mean, that defense plays so fast. It, it really, and Philip Rivers is a statue. You know, they can throw and dish the ball off to to, to Nehemiah Hines all they want to. It's it, the linebackers will be there. So I'll take. Oh, we uh, didn't really talk about Jonathan Taylor. Because, oh yeah. Um, the one thing I did see um, posted was Philip Rivers in his post game interview alluded to JT being nicked up. Mm. So that is something to monitor. Jordan Wilkins got 20 carries. Right. If you're a JT owner, you need to prioritize Jordan Wilkins on waivers this week. Just go get yourself that handcuff. Yeah, I mean, Wilkins, that's 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 a good – I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't think Wilkins would get that kind of volume outside of Taylor being nicked up. So, I mean, it's something to, to monitor throughout the year – or throughout the week, I should say. Next game on the list, 